Hi, welcome to This Week in Kettering. Today is Thursday, March 3rd. I'm Carrie Basson with the Kettering Schools, and I've got a couple of guests here today. Adam Duffy. Adam is president of the United Student Body here at Fairmont High School, and Colin Colbert is the commissioner of service with USB as well. So welcome, guys. Great to have you here. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, seniors helping seniors. We've, um, Adam, you and I have actually discussed that a couple of times here on the show, but we're doing things a little bit differently now with this program whereby we uh, team up our seniors here at Fairmont with seniors out in the community. So, Colin, why don't you talk a little bit about what we're doing a little bit differently now? So this year being a little different, before with OGT we were able to do that whole week where they could go in the morning. Now, because we're not going to have that special week, uh, we're doing an after school. It's for it's about a 10 week long period. Uh, this year we're supplementing with class councils. So the first couple weeks were for freshmen, then sophomores and juniors and seniors. And then for just regular seniors at the school, it's open for them whenever they can sign up and go and volunteer at either one of the places, whichever works out better for them. Uh, about every week we're doing something different. So actually this week's pretty special for Wednesday for the terraces, Senor Haney is gonna come with some Spanish students and we're gonna do some Spanish dancing uh -huh. And we're going to actually, the residents want to learn some Spanish and we're going to do like a little culture thing because that's one of the things that they asked us to do with them this year. Uh, we do things like crafts. So like here with our beautiful butterfly clap was our opening to spring last week. Uh, and then we do board games and stuff like that. Things that they can do to get interactive and work with the students. Okay. And um, Adam, talk a little bit about um, the kind of relationship that, that you students have been able to develop with the residents over at the terraces, which is actually over located on Dorothy Lane. Um, well, the more like for the students that repeatedly go, like members of USB have been going a lot and they develop like stronger relationships. Like I know Colin has some strong relationships with some of the seniors there. And then that means they just look forward to the kids coming each week because of how often we're there instead of just looking forward it for it for a whole year. Once, once a year, okay. And um, Colin, tell me, how, how have you um, been able to get students involved? And since this is after school, it's a little bit different. Um, how, how has that been, and has it been pretty successful? It has been pretty successful. We normally have, um, I'd say at the lowest, 10 kids that go each time. Um, like I said, we are using kind of class council as a filler for this year as we're doing a transition. Um, hopefully we're looking more next year to get more seniors to go, but we have been uh, we've had some regulars that they go once, they're like, oh, I'll try this out, and then they decide, oh, I want to come back every week. And also, you know, I try to make it a big thing in my classes, passing around the word, hey, come support me, come do some stuff. And it's really, it's not too hard with just being an hour and a half and being right down the road from school. Involvement is not a hard thing to get for students to do. Okay, great. And uh, you got a beautiful little uh, necklace hanging around your neck there. What, what's that? Talk, talk a little bit about some of the things that you guys have done with, with the residents there. So this here is something <laughs> that we did for Valentine's Day. Um, this is something that we made at the terraces for them that they could do uh, passing around Valentine's and they could hang it up on the doors if they wanted to or from various places. Uh, we actually, I got that idea. We had made them similarly at the Carlisle House a few years before, so we did something different with them this year. But that was the introduction to the Valentine's party that actually a resident planned out this year that we were able to go and do the next week. So they got to have a lot of okay. fun with that. So that's an act actually like a little pocket where yeah. they put their, oh, okay, I got you. Yes. And they gotcha. were able to make them kind of different colors and customize it. And that was more of just a test on how to do lacing and stuff like that. So the final products were a little bigger and much nicer looking. <laughs> well, I think that's beautiful, Adam. It's very nice. <laughs> how do you guys come up with, with, um, kind of ideas for things to do with the residents? Do you kind of talk with them a little bit, find out what they enjoy? What, how do you do that? Um, it, it is a little different with both places as one is an assisted living and one is an independent living. Uh, so with the terraces being the independent living, Lisa, the manager there actually had a meeting with all of her residents and was able to come up with a lot of ideas for us. And me and Corey Miller sat down with her and kind of went through things that we could do, things that were probably out of the question for this year, but maybe for further years. And so that's how we got the idea for the Spanish. But then also we've kind of stuck with the idea of doing crafts, doing stuff that they enjoy doing. And so I spent a lot of time looking at crafts and stuff like that that we could be doing each mm -hmm. week. Okay. And how, how is it a little bit different, Adam, working um, maybe with the residents at Terraces and the residents at Carlisle? Um, as he has said, um, there's the difference in assisted and independent living. So with the Carlisle House, there has to be more patience with um, 
people with Alzheimer's because mm -hmm. there's a lot more that you have to do with them and it's more like you take the lead with everything but with the uh, terraces you m give the resident more of the lead with that okay and and Colin uh, you're, you're the commissioner of service why mm -hmm. why is that important to you in terms of because it sounds like you've uh, really immersed yourself and I know before we started you were talking to you've come up with a lot of these mm -hmm. craft ideas and things like that things that you know that they're going to enjoy why is that something that's important to you um, one of the things is I had my sister was on USB also so I, I just spent a lot of time with her going to these things making a connection with these people I work at Dorothy Lane Market in Oakwood which is right down the road from the terraces so a lot of them come in mm -hmm. and I know them as customers as well um, but another thing is I actually have a grandpa who lives with home with me that suffered from a stroke so he's mm -hmm. not always all there and just kind of me in the last couple of years learning how to work with him and stuff getting him involved because a lot of times that's the biggest thing is they just feel like they can't do anything so that was something that me and Lynn talked about a lot and me and Lisa talked about a lot is trying to get them involved in a way that they feel like they're really contributing and not just doing just kind of base crafts and trying to get some we're going to look at growing some herbs and fresh stuff that they can actually use in their cooking and that the chefs can use it to cook at Carlisle mm -hmm. House and stuff like that. That's great. Well, I know that, that you guys make a big difference in the lives of, of those residents and um, every May we uh, take a group of the residents from the terraces um, to graduation and that's I think a highlight for all of them to see you guys succeeding mm -hmm. and graduating. So thanks for all that you guys are doing for, for the seniors in our thanks. community and uh, for really uh, kind of championing service and what that means to our young people today. So thanks very much for joining us today oh, uh, on this week in Kettering. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you for having us. A big thanks to Adam and Colin for joining me um, on this week with Kettering. And now I'd like to introduce Liz Jensen. Liz is the principal here at the Fairmont Career Tech Center. Welcome, Liz. Great thank to you have so you here. Much. And we're going to talk a little bit about now a um, college readiness program that we're kind of piloting with Sinclair Community College. And I'm just going to kind of let you start and talk a little bit about this because I'm going to be learning a little bit as you're talking as well. So great. I'm very excited to introduce this. This is the second year that it's been available to seniors here in the Career Technology Center. So now as a special pilot in the whole Dayton area, they're allowing Kettering Fairmont High School as a whole to participate in this. So I'm very excited. So just a little background on why college readiness is important. If you start classes, if you start college in needing remediation, that means that according to college testing, you are not ready for college, your chances of success are much lower. You must start with developmental classes, they call them, remedial courses, which means that you have to pay for those. You okay. cannot take college ready classes until you're finished with them and they do not count towards your major. So a lot of people are dropping out out of the frustration and expense because it's taking much longer than typical. So if you look at this graphic, 58.5% of those who go to two year colleges in America are requiring developmental classes when they start and then 24.6 complete them and only 6.4 percent graduate from a two-year college within three years if they started out needing remediation. The statistics are also bad for a four-year. You can see over my shoulder here a quarter of all people in the nation going to four-year colleges require remediation and only 33.8 percent of them will graduate within six years. So having kids start out with classes that count, classes they need, is very important, which is why Fairmont High School as a whole does College and Career Readiness Day, mm -hmm. where we do college testing, help students get ready for these entrance tests. At Sinclair, the entrance test, in addition to ACT and SAT that they require, but it's free, so a lot of students take it instead of the ACT or SAT, which are about $50 a piece, is the AccuPlacer test. Okay. This test is a difficult test for students to pass based on the math test. The math test is a gradual difficulty test and it starts with no calculator. So a lot of students who actually excel at high level math do not have the skills without the calculator to do that middle school math and the math department at Sinclair would agree in this statement that we have students taking math that's too low for them based on this one test. So that's why this initiative is growing. What it says is any student graduating from Fairmont High School with at least a 3.0 cumulative GPA will be made college ready in all areas. And does that, does that speak to our, our programming here at Fairmont? In other words, if you can, if you can graduate from Fairmont with a 3.0, then 
based on the courses that we offer students, you are career uh, college ready. Is that Absolutely. what that's telling us? Okay. They started this with career technical <laughs> students. They trust that Fairmont High School is a very good indication of awesome curriculum going on in the area. They've seen that our students are very successful in their courses, and because of that, they wanted to reach out and do this initiative. So this initiative will help our students be college ready, save a lot of stress and time on the ACCUPLACER, definitely save kids from being accidentally missed placed mm -hmm. because of those basic calculator skills and save families money on the ACT and SAT. If you know that you are going to Sinclair, you could potentially skip those if you are absolutely positive. Okay. And a as a career tech principal and educator, um, how do you feel about this? Is this is this a good thing? Is this is this a move in the right direction in terms of um, not only having kids go to college but having them actually graduate? This is absolutely imperative to our <laughs> workforce and to these students. We, I, I really espouse that um, it's Sinclair is a great option for our students because of this crippling college debt that people are, are graduating with. So if you can do your first two years at Sinclair, two-year degrees are actually growing much faster than four-year degrees in America. Mm -hmm. So based on that, a lot of our students will actually end their education at two-year degrees, which will make them a lot of money Mm -hmm. contrary to what it used to be and then a lot of our students are also doing years one and two at Sinclair and going on to three and four so we need to get them through college which is one of the tenets of career tech get them through college faster and with less expense and this right. initiative helps with that and is an awesome step and I know you've talked and and it, it's a statistic that's always shocking to me um, talk a little bit about the, the statistic about how many students actually graduate within eight years of, of entering college, I think, is it's low. In the state of Ohio, out of every 100 Ohioans who actually make it into college and begin, only 40 graduate within eight years, and that's the two and four years combined. So that is a staggering statistic. We are not putting out enough graduates to meet our workforce needs, and we really need to bump this up. And frustration is a huge mm -hmm. reason why people drop out because they're mired down in uh, these developmental classes takes them too long so this is a win-win for us and Sinclair because mm -hmm. they've seen that our students who start out college ready complete and do a good job which is a lot to say for our community absolutely and go ahead talk about so how to participate how do you participate first of all you want to see your counselor check your GPA make sure that your cumulative GPA is at least a 3.0 then we have certain rules as an educational institution about releasing student data. So we need a student and parent signature that you are okay, okay. with us giving your GPA information to Sinclair. Then we will send that over with your release form. You apply online to Sinclair. And then we'd also encourage you to fill out scholarship applications. All the seniors who said they were going to Sinclair have been told about these scholarships. The deadline was February 28th, but that was actually the priority deadline. They will still consider students. If you have between a 3.0 and a 3.4, they give out Virginia McNeil scholarships, which are $2,000 for each year that you are there. And if you have above a 3.4, 3.5 to a 4.0, they give $3,000 each year you're at Sinclair. So when Sinclair is already so affordable to begin with, then you put in these scholarships, people are completing with very little to no debt. Absolutely, and I, I think we've talked about this, that that is just the way to go. Whether mm -hmm. whether your um, goal is a two-year degree or to do two years and go on to a four-year degree, I, I can't, as a parent, I can't think of a better way to do that than, than through Sinclair. And as you said, if you can uh, keep that GPA going, then you're gonna you're gonna really benefit through through these scholarships and through this program as well. So I think we great. take Sinclair a little bit for granted because it is in our backyard, mm -hmm. but this is a nationally renowned program that is well known all over the country, and we should be proud to have it. Absolutely, and once again, they're putting in place something that's really going to benefit our students. So thanks very much for being here today, mm -hmm. and thank you for joining us on this week with Kettering. If you have any questions about anything we've talked about today, you can always contact me at 499-1458 or at Carrie, K-A-R-I dot Basson, B-A-S-S-O-N, at KetteringSchools.org. I can uh, answer your questions or I'll put you in touch with somebody who can. Always happy to hear from you. And we'll see you next time on This Week with Kettering.